end, but West Brom, Danny, had their chances. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring you the highlights. Robbie Earl, mm -hmm. Danny Higginbotham here in the studio with me. The game unfolded, well, two minutes on the clock, and it all started brilliantly for West Brom, Danny. Yeah, and I think they took Manchester United with, uh, by surprise. The intensity in which they started from, some lovely ball in from Gallagher and Jean C. Heady wins there, Lindelof complaining for a far, but I just think it's the desire and the, the determination. That's what you want to see from the centre forward, and I think Lindelof should do better, be it having a better defensive position as well, and he doesn't, and West Brom take an early lead, but then Manchester United get themselves back into it. It starts with Fernandes actually being brought down in the box, no question, it's not a penalty or anything like that, but it seems to be a real frustration, and an anger comes from this, from Fernandes, and you can see his reaction, and just before half-time, they do get the leveller. Shaw puts the ball into the box. It's an unbelievable finish from Fernandez. And the way he's able to get his body over the ball and his left foot around it gives Johnston no chance and equalizes just before half time with a wonderful finish. Bruno Fernandez to the rescue once again for Manchester United. That was 1 1 just in the nick of time before that half time whistle into the second half. Plenty to talk about, Robbie Earl. Yeah, and we'll start with this, Rebecca. It, it's Harry Maguire going down under challenge from Ajay. Referee points of the penalty spot. Now, the process usually says here check if he's an offside first. You can see there Maguire looks offside. And then, secondly, the referee in VAR will check whether it was a foul. There's some debate as to how much Ajay does in, in Maguire going down. And so. Um, the referee's asked to go and have a look at this. Now, he then goes to VAR and says it wasn't a foul. What we're hearing is the process usually is offside first, foul second. They didn't do it in that order, but actually got to the right result. But having said that, Sam Johnson in goal came up with a couple of good saves in West Brom, were dogged with, the, with their defending. You see as the first shot comes in here, keeper reacts well there, and then defender in the right place at the right time, through long to get the ball away from danger and then West Bromwich will be in low range danger and by Jean actually just runs through Harry Maguire and at this stage looks like he's got his chance to get his second goal does this part well Maguire goes to ground easily but David De Gea who's had some criticism reacts really well and pulls the, the, the ball away from the goalkeeper and as West Brom push forward and sort of think there's three points here, Jean has a brilliant chance. What a ball this is and he's just got to control this, keep it down and hit the target. He does neither and West Brom and Albion look like they're going to have to settle for a point and then it was a point that they looked like they could have lost. Harry Maguire with a header here and I think Sam Johnson, a former Manchester United academy player, gets fingertips to that. It goes onto the post and away, and you can see the reaction from Harry Maguire. He knew how important that was. The Mercedes full match stats, well, it's a point they could have done with all three in this title race, though. It does, however, extend their longest away unbeaten run to now 19, one short of that Chelsea team in 07, 08, and now eight short of the Arsenal team back in 03, 04. Danny Higginbotham, what is holding Manchester United back right now? Defensive lapses. There's no way. When you look at Manchester United, the last three games, they scored 13 goals. 13 goals in three games and one only one game. And that, for me, is, is an issue. Going forward, they're a match for anybody. But when you look at them defensively, yes, they have been relatively strong. They've got the worst defensive record in the top nine. But it's situations where a lot of the goals they concede, I don't think the opposition have to do unbelievably well to get those goals. Are we talking Lindelof and Maguire? I think Lindelof and Maguire, the issue that I have with Lindelof and Maguire, I think they're both very good centre-backs, but they're too similar. They're too similar. You need one that wants to be the one that wants to go and win the ball, and the other one that then is going to drop off, and that's where Bay comes in. So I don't know whether, obviously, you as a, as a central yeah. midfielder, Robert, is that how you liked it? Opposites is in terms of that central midfield. I tell you what, what if, I, if I could, I, mm. if I could get the best of Bay and the best of Lindelof, I'm happy. It, it, it's like. And what about Maguire? Next to Maguire. Oh, okay. Next to Maguire. <laughs> okay. Not the worst Maguire, but <laughs> we next, lost next the United to Harry, captain Ma for a second. Ma there. Maguire is going to play. Okay. But just the the. the Lindelof's not as athletic. Mm. Um, I think Bailly makes some rash decisions, and that's one of the problems. I think one of the problems with, with, with Manchester United as a whole is, and it's the reason why I was saying they're in a title race, but I don't see them doing it, because over 38 games, still, Rebecca, we don't know consistently what we're going to get. You go away to West Bromwich Albion, and you concede a goal in, in two minutes, and you're chasing Manchester City to win a title. You're not going to do that. You go 2-0 up against Everton, go 3-2 up against Everton, and don't get all three points. You're not going to run down Manchester City at the top I, of the table.